Okay, with the very last Diff FX tour about to kick off this week, I believe, um, I thought I'd finally get around to doing something I've been meaning to do for quite some time and just throw together a bit of a primer on sampling and sampling methods used by Diff FX or in particular by Sean Lowry through the years. Um, a bit of an introduction as to how some of the sounds are made. Um, Sean taught me some of these basics back in about 95, 96. Uh, so the first sound I'll start with was the very first sound I heard come out of the speakers when I bought my first Def FX tape, uh, Surge. It actually comes from Metallica's song Master of Puppets, which is this one. That's the sample, the actual chorus. So the sound comes from the introduction here. It's that sustained guitar sound. So Sean took that and used that as a waveform. Now a sampler changes the speed of playback. It takes a sound, changes how fast it plays back to get different frequencies. So that's unity. And so I can actually get an, a full octave down, which is the same key down one, plays at half the speed. It's a little bit too low, so up a bit higher is better might recognise this one. And that sound was used through quite a few early Def FX songs. Etc. Now if you take a actual phrase or drum beat or something like that, and do the same thing where you're using one sound and then going an octave lower or higher. Now something which uh, Sean did was he assigned his pitch bend wheel, which usually goes one or two notes higher or lower. He changed it so it actually went a full octave higher or lower. So you get... That's the same thing playing either twice as fast or half as fast. If you apply it to a, a piece of um, spoken word, etc., um, you get some interesting results. So one of Sean's favourite so um, sounds they used on well, pretty much every album, as far as I'm aware, came from the Dead Kennedys song Riot. First piece of um, words out of that song. Now, if you change that to half speed, an octave down, that sounds very strange. And twice. But the thing with the pitch bend is you can actually change it while the sample is playing. What um, Sean would do would be re-trigger the sound and what he call messing up the sample. So one of, so the end result would be something like this. So Shane, Sean, Sean liked to use delay a lot for this kind of atmospheric sounds over the top of the rest of the song. Another sound that he liked to use as an atmospheric is this kind of 
whacking sound. So with the low delay on that, you'd create these atmospherics over the top. Especially at the start of gigs, that was always a, a big thing. The last sample I'll look at, well, obviously there's a whole heap of samples that FFX used over the years, but um, a big influence seemed to have been Slayer for Sean. Um, not only in actual sample sources, but lyrical influences, musical influences. So there's there's melodies in there that you can, if you listen to Slayer albums, you'll see the same melody or very similar melodies in the Slayer albums. So this final one is from Slayer's song Tormentor. <sighs> pitch screams at the end are very good so the end lyric from that one is the actual namesake tormentor now I didn't quite get this right but it should give you an idea um, if you listen to truth lies and fear of death in particular the live recordings you might recognise that one. And that about sums up the basics. Obviously there was a lot more samples along the way, um, especially in the early days. So the likes of Surfers of the Mind had the drum beats behind that were black boxes right on time, mixed together with um, Le Chic's Le Freak. So they blended together very nicely. And another section of that is actually from Abu's Money, Money, Money. But we can go on forever. Uh, that's as many samples as I've pulled together at the moment. So. That's where we'll leave it.